Hey everybody, Ryan here. Alright, gonna go over all the games from the 8th of April 2021. There are quite a few games to go over, so let's get started after this quick little thing. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and also make sure to hit that like button for the video too. Alright, let's get started with the games from the 8th of April 2021. Alright, first game, New Jersey versus Buffalo. New Jersey fresh off the trade that they did yesterday. Kyle Palmieri and Travis Sajak no longer with the team. Let's see how they fared against Buffalo. 6-3 New Jersey wins. Alright, 53 seconds into the game. Victor Olofsson scores his 11th of the year from Henry Yokiharju and Kyle Pozo. Then at 2.06 of the first, Pavel Zaka scores his 9th on the power play from Ty Smith and Jesper Bratt. At 3.47, less than two minutes later, Pavel Zaka scores his 10th of the year, second of the game, second power play goal of the game, too, from Smith and Bratt. Then at 16.04 of the first, Jack Hughes, eighth, from Yanni Kuokinen and Yegor Sharangovich. Then the second period, Buffalo starts a comeback. 11.56, Tage Thompson's third from Brandon Montour and Colin Miller. Then at 18.21, Jeff Skinner's fourth from Sam Reinhardt and Rasmus Dahlin. Then it goes to all New Jersey in the third. 8.45 into the third, Jesper Boquist scores his first of the year from Michael McLeod. Then at 18.17, Sharon Govich scores his ninth from Hughes and Kuokinen. At 19.28, Kuokinen scores his sixth of the year from Sharon Govich and Hughes. Kuokinen, Sharon Govich, <laughs> had pretty dang good games. Goal and two assists each, I believe it was. Yep. Pretty good games. Alright. New Jersey outshot Buffalo 38-27. Uh, they also beat Buffalo in a face-off dot 52-48. Uh, power plays were 2-4 for four for New Jersey, 1-3 for three for Buffalo. Penalty minutes were 8-6, 8 for Buffalo. Hits were 13-9 in favor of Buffalo. Blocks 11-6 in favor of Buffalo. And giveaways 2-1, New Jersey with 2. Aaron Dell had 24 saves for 889 save percentage for the win. And Linus Olmark, 32 saves, 865 save percentage for the loss. On to Philly versus the New York Islanders. I don't believe Palmieri and Zajac played in this game. If they did, they didn't have any points. Alright, 3-2, the Islanders will win this in shootout. So at 6-10 of the first, Brock Nelson scores his 15th from Ryan Pollock and Anthony Beauvillier. That's 7-13 of the first, Jordan Eberle would make it 2-0, his 14th of the year from Leo Komarov. Then at 7-27 of the first, Samuel Morin would get a 5-minute major for boarding and a game misconduct. That was not taken at the best of times. They were lucky that the Islanders did not score a single power play goal, but... Still, Morin is probably looking at a suspension. We'll have to see what comes with that. Speaking of suspensions, actually, I'll talk about that at the end. Never mind. Doesn't involve these two teams. 13.53 into the first, Nicholas Abe Kubel scored his third of the year for Philly. Then at 3.22 of the second period, Jakob Voracek scores his seventh from Claude Giroux and Travis Konechny, making it 2 2, sending us to. Third period where there was no scoring and no scoring in overtime, then shootout. Brock Nelson scored the shootout winning goal, giving the Islanders the two points. Philadelphia actually outshot the Islanders today, 27-23. Beat him in the faceoff dot as well, 56-44. Power play was 0 for 2 for Philly, 0 for 3 for the Islanders. Penalty minutes 19 to 4, 19 for Philly. Hits were 29-14 in favor of the Islanders. Blocks 19-10 in favor of the Islanders and giveaways 11 each. Hart had 21 saves, 9-13 save percentage for the loss. And Sorokin, 25 saves, 9-26 save percentage for the win. Now we're on to Pittsburgh at the New York Rangers. Pittsburgh wins this one 5-2. Alright, 6-26 into the first, Radim Zorona. Zahorna, sorry. Scored his second from Marcus Pedersen and Chris Letang. 
Then at 202 of the second, Colin Blackwell scores his 11th on the power play from Va- Pava Buknevich and Capo Caco. Then at 323 of the second, Chris Letang's 7th from Jake Gensel and Brian Dumoulin. Then at 11.28 of the second, Evan Rodriguez scored his 5th on the power play from Zerona and Jason Zucker. Then at 16.14 of the second, Brendan Smith and Sam Lafferty were, would get into a fight. All right, then 10.29 into the third, Zucker 6th from Rodriguez and Cece. Then at 18.29, no, I'm sorry, 13.48 of the third, Kevin Rooney 6th from Adam Fox, making 4-2 at that point. Then at 18.29 of the third, Mark Jankowski's 4th from Zach Aston Reese. Giving Pittsburgh the 5-2 win. Pittsburgh beat the Rangers in the shot category as well, 32-24. They beat them in the face all dot, 59-41. Power plays 1-4 for four for both teams, 15 penalty minutes each. 22-19 were the hits in favor of Pittsburgh. Blocks were 14-9 in favor of the Rangers. Giveaways 12-5, 12, 12 for the Rangers. Jerry had 22 saves for 917 save percentage. Andrew Sterkin had 27 saves, 871 save percentage for the loss. On to Boston versus Washington. Boston would win this one 4-2 with much needed two points. Because they have been on a serious downward slide. But hey, coming out of it hopefully, and I'm sure their fans hope, hope so too. 33 seconds into the first, Jeremy Lausen scores his I'm sorry, Lazan scored his first of the year from Brad Marchand and Craig Smith. That 16.02, Anton Blith scored his first career goal. Congratulations to him. Then at 4.09 of the second, Marchand's 19th, shorthanded. That would technically be your game winner eventually. 10.08 into the second, Alex Ovechkin scored his 20th on the power play from John Carlson and TJ Oshie. That 10.27, so less than 20 seconds later. Oshie would score his 12th on the power play from Carlson and Backstrom. Oh, I forgot to mention, 1901 of the first Nick Ritchie and Garnet Hathaway got into a fight. That one goes back to last season when Ritchie was still with Anaheim with the whole spitting incident for Hathaway. Then at 1655, Smith scored his 7th on the power play from Charlie Coyle and Jakob Zobril. And that would give us the 4-2 score in the final. 4-2 Boston, getting two needed points. Capitals outshot the Bruins 33-32. Bruins beat them in the face out, dot 58-42. Boston was 1-4 for four on the power play. Washington 2-7. for seven. Penalty minutes 21-15, 21 for Boston. Hits were 26-19 in favor of the Capitals. Blocks 18-9 in favor of Boston. Giveaways were 6-2, Washington was 6. Swayman got his first win of the season, 31 saves, 939 save percentage, and Samsonov, 28 saves, 875 save percentage for loss. On to Florida versus Carolina. All right, there was a trade involving Florida today. So Florida shit out Brett Connolly, Riley Stillman, Henrik Borgstrom, which was a first-round pick in 2016 for them, and a seventh-round pick to Chicago. And Chicago sent back Lucas Carlson and Lucas Walmark. So, basically just a salary dump for Florida. And Chicago getting a couple young guys in there. So, it's really more so. I'm not sure if any of these guys really make a huge difference for Chicago, but... Honestly, I'm kind of surprised they only got a 7th round pick. I would have thought they would have got a higher pick for taking on that contract. But hey, it is what it is. But that's the trade. I'm not sure anyone really wins the trade. I think it's more of a business deal than an actual trade. Although it is an actual trade. But I don't think it's for winning a trade at all. But there you go. That was the one trade for today. And it gets Florida cap room. So... Now the question is, what are they going to do with that? Is there something bigger in the works now? Maybe Taylor Hall. Just saying. Probably not, but never know. But 
Carolina would win this game against Florida today, 3-0. Uh, 14-31 into the first, Sebastian Ajo gets his 16th of the year on the power play from Vincent Trocek and Andrei Sveshnikov. Then at 6.35 of the second, Trocek scores his 16th of the year from Natchez and Shea, and Brady Shea, sorry. Then 19 away of the third, Natchez scores his 10th from Nino Niederreiter. And there's your final goal, 3-0, Carolina wins. Florida out of shot Carolina, 24-22. They beat him in the faceoff dot as well, 58-42. Florida was 0-4 for 4 on the power play versus Carolina's 1-4. for 4. 12 penalty minutes each. Hits were 39-24 in favor of Florida. Blocks 9-8 in favor of Carolina. Giveaways 14-8, 14 for Carolina. Dredger had 19 saves, 905 save percentage, and Nedelkovic, or Nedelkovic, I believe is how they said it the other day. 24 saves for the shutout. All right. Tampa Bay versus Columbus. Not Columbus's night. 6-4, to four, Tampa Bay will win this game. And they'd really run away with us in the first. That's really where this game would get out of hand pretty quick. 58 seconds into the game, Blake Coleman scores his 8th of the year for Tampa from Yanni Gord and Barkley Goodrow. Then on 4.41, Steven Stamkos 17th on the power play from Victor Hedman and Andre Plot. Stamkos would leave this game early with an injury and not come back. Something to keep an eye on there. Hopefully he's okay. 541 into the first, Barkley Goodrow 6th from Gord and Coleman. By the way, Goodrow, Gord, and Coleman would have very good games. Uh, 1959, I'm sorry, 1741 into the first, Michael Dozato gets one back for uh, Columbus. His third of the year from uh, Jack Roslovic and Elvis Merzlikens. Then 1959 was second left. Ryan McDonough's third from Yanni Gord and Blake Coleman. Then at 4.54 of the second, Ross Colton's sixth of the year from Tyler Johnson and Pat Maroon. Then at 17.08 of the second, Ross Vick's eighth of the year from Michael Grigorenko and Cam Atkinson. Then at 18.56 of the second, McDonough's would, McDonough would score his second of the game, fourth of the year from Gord and Goodrow. Then at 10.41 of the third, Zach Wierenski would score seventh from Texier and Rosovic. Then 19.14, Max Domi seventh from Bjorkstrand and Kuchen. Then at 7.29 of the third, I forgot to mention this, Stefan Matteau would fight Cal Foote. Hmm. wonder if their dads ever had any battles like that. Just wondering. If you know, let me know in the comments. Columbus outshot Tampa 36-30. Tampa beat him in the face out dot 57-43. Power play was 1 for 4 for Tampa, 0 for 2 for Columbus. Penalty miss 19-13-19 for Tampa. Hits were 23-15 in favor of Columbus. And blocks were 12-6 in favor of Columbus. Giveaways were 10-7-10 for Columbus. Fasileski 32 saves, 8-8-9 save percentage for the win. Lock, no, win if I could think straight. Fast let's get out the win. Uh, Corpus Salo started the game, made three saves on six shots against, had a 500 save percentage, was replaced by Merzlikens, 21 saves, 875 save percentage. So there you go. On to Winnipeg versus Montreal. Winnipeg will win this one 4 2. 18 seconds into the game, Josh Morrissey scores his third of the year from Matthew Perot and Mason Appleton. Then a minute 40 into the first, Phil Deneau would respond, getting his fourth of the year from Tomas Tatar and Kasperi Kakaniemi. Then 8.03 into the first, Trevor Lewis would score his second of the year from Neil Pionk and Derek Forbert. Then at 13.07, Nikolai Ehlers scored his 16th from Kyle Connor and Logan Stanley. Then at 15.14 of the second, Paul Byron would score his fourth, making it 3-2 at that point. For Jeff Petrie and Kaka Niemi. Then 19-22 of the third, Andrew Kopp would add empty netters, 13th of the year from Kyle Connor and Mark Scheifele. Make it 4-2, your final score, Winnipeg winning. Montreal actually outshot them, 38-27. Th uh, they beat him in the faceoff dot, too, 
Winnipeg was 0 for 3 on the power play. Montreal 0 for 2. 8, uh, eight penalty minutes is 6. 8 for Montreal. Hits were 28-21 in favor of Montreal. Blocks 15-12 in favor of Montreal. And giveaways were 18-10, 18 for Winnipeg. Goalies, Hellebuck had 36 saves, 947 save percentage for the win. And Jake Allen, 23 saves, 885 save percentage for a loss. On to another North Division matchup, Edmonton versus Ottawa. Edmonton will win this one 3-1. to one. Uh, They would play this game without Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who was out with an injury. Hopefully he gets back soon for him, because I'm sure they'd want him back sooner rather than later. But they won their first one without him. But it was against Ottawa. Alright, 11 minutes into the second is our first goal. Kyler Yamamoto scored his 8th of the year on the power play from Connor McDavid and Tyson Berry. At 1803 of the second, Connor Brown of Ottawa gets his 12th of the year from Chris Tierney and Mike Riley. Then at 12.58 of the third, uh, Devin Shore would score his fourth from Caleb Jones and Jujar Karia. Then at 19.50, Jesse Pugliarvi would score his 19th unassisted empty net goal. Make a 3-1 Edmonton win. Shots on goal were 40-23 in favor of Ottawa in this game. Ottawa beam in the faceoff dot as well, 55-45. Power plays were 1-for-1 one for, one for Edmonton, 0-for-2 for, for Ottawa. 4 penalty minutes for Edmonton, 2 for Ottawa. Hits were 33-30 in favor of Ottawa. Blocks 12-9 in favor of Edmonton. Giveaways 8-5 Edmonton with 8. Sorry, that's my cat clawing my carpet. Um... Smith had 39 saves for the 975 save percentage for the win. And Forsberg had 20 saves, 909 save percentage for the loss for Ottawa. On to Nashville versus Detroit. Nashville would slap them hard. 7-1. to one. No scoring in the first. A minute 48 into the second. Detroit would score first. Darren Helms third from Troy Stetcher and Adam Ernie. Then at 228 of the second, Victor Arvidsson will score a sixth of the year for Nick Cousins and Matthias Ekholm. Then at 636 of the second, Eric Holla would get his fourth from Rocco Grimaldi. Then at 850 of the second, Adam Ernie would fight Matthew Olivier. Ernie would get a boarding uh, minor at the same time, so I'm guessing that's what started it because Olivier would get an instigator and a misconduct at the same time. Then at 16-10 of the second period, Nick Cousins scored his fourth from Colton Sissons and Eric Halla. Then at 7-06 of the third, Michael Granlin would score his tenth from Ben Harper and Matthias Eckholm. Then at the 10-minute mark of the third, Arvidsson would score his seventh from Tyler Lewington. Then a minute six later at 11-06 of the third, Arvidsson would complete the hat trick. Yay, hat trick! His eighth of the year. Then at 15.55 into the third, Yakov Trenin would score his third of the year from Sissons and Ben Harper, giving us our final score, 7-1. to one. Nashville slapped Detroit around. Really, they didn't. I mean, they just had better goaltending, and Bernier for Detroit did not have a good game in the net. Because Detroit outshot Nashville 26-23, Faceoffs were definitely in Nashville's favor. They they beat them bad there, 72-28. Power plays 0 for 1 for Nashville, 0 for 2 for Detroit. Penalty minutes 23 to 11, 23 for uh, Nashville. Hits were 13-10 in favor of Nashville. Blocks 14-5 in favor of Nashville, and giveaways 4-3 Detroit with four. Soros had 25 saves, 962 save percentage for the win. And Bernier, 25 saves, 781 save percentage, and loss. On to our last game of the evening. That would be Dallas versus Chicago. And Dallas will win this one 5-1. to one, Getting some much-needed points, especially against somebody they're chasing. Alright, 9-19 into the first. Ru- Ugh, Ruper hints? Really? Evidently, I can't write down names correctly. It's Rupe hints. Scoring his 12th of the year on the power play from Jamie Benn and Joe Pavelski. 
That 14.05 of the first, Dominic Kubalik would tie the game up with his 14th of the year from Vinny Henestroza, who they acquired the other day. I forgot to talk about that. Or no, that was one of those technical issues. I couldn't make a video that night. But Vinny Henestroza was traded to Chicago the other night. And that was also assisted by Philip Kirishev. Then at minute 13 into the second period, Jason Robertson scores his ninth of the year, continuing his great rookie season from Rupe Hintz and Asa Lindell. Then 14.02 of the second, Miro Haskinen scored his sixth of the year on the power play from Ben and Hintz. Then at 15.47 of the, first, uh, the second, sorry, Blake Como's second of the year from Andrew Cogliano. Then at 50 seconds into the third, Blake Como's third from Rupe Hintz. Hints had a great game, by the way. A goal and, let's see, one, two, three assists. So, four-point game for Rupe Hints tonight. All right, Chicago outshot Dallas 39-34. Dallas beam on the face on dot 58-42. Dallas had, was two for three on the power play. Chicago 0 for three. Six penalty minutes each. Dallas out hit them 46-31. Very physical game, as you can tell. Blocks 23-10 in favor of Dallas, and giveaways were 9-7, Chicago with 9. Kadobin, 38 saves, 974 save percentage, and Lincoln, 29 saves, 853 save percentage for loss. There you go, that's all the games for today, and the one trade that occurred today, it seems like it was more of a salary dump for the most part. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell next to that, that so you can be notified when I drop a new video. And other than that, make sure to comment and share. Let me know in the comments what you think of the trade. Who do you think won if there is truly a winner in that trade? Other than that, I will see you all there. Bye, everybody.